Hello and welcome to the OAU Robotics iLab. I'd like to demonstrate the position control experiment. Now the position control experiment is an experiment which is geared more towards the introductory part of robotics. robotics. Um, if you are someone who has not used a robotic arm before, then this experiment is for you. Alternatively, one could make um, this experiment, experiment even a little more challenging so that even those who have performed, who have worked with robotic arms to an, to an extent or have done robotics, who have taken robotics courses could benefit from this laboratory or from this experiment. Um, here I'll schedule a session. Um, being an interactive experiment, you have to schedule a session to be able to perform the experiment. Um, now just for the record, I'm using the MIT developed um, interactive iLab architecture. So I'll make a reservation um, for immediately and then I'll go ahead and redeem that reservation. Okay. So now just before launching the lab it's always better to open or to launch the webcam first because once you have launched the lab, um, once you've launched the experiment you'll have to come um, back to this window to get this page for the webcam. The webcam is not, at least at current, the webcam is not embedded in the um, experiment window. Okay, I just want to get this page in such a way that I can view it side by side with the client once I've launched the client. Okay, so now I click on Launch Lab. Now again, it's advisable to restore um, this window instead of working in the maximized mode we have to restore this window so that once again I can place it side by side with the webcam feed. Okay, so here's our client. It was written with LabVIEW, as we can see. Now I'll start by clicking this button up here, which is the Run button. It notice the webcam, the um, robotic arm has responded, or is responding to um, commands. So one could do either of two experiments with this. One could just simply play around with it with a with like robotic arm, get it to just move up and down and if you could get it to do a boogie, well, <laughs> it's, up, it's all up to you, but really you could just use each of the sliders to just control the motion of the robotic arm. Now, on a more serious um, scale, if you wish to, um, if you've done some amount of robotics or some amount of, yeah, some amount of robotics and you want to try this out here. You could use this as an experiment to test for kinematics. For example, let's assume I place the robotic arm in, say, this position. You could compute the four kinematics of this robotic arm. It has five degrees of freedom. Um, I'll be glad to make available the dimensions of each of these links, and or the dimensions of each of the links, so you can compute the four kinematics of the robotic arm. Now, if you've computed the four kinematics of the robotic arm, then one can tell from the calculation what position we expect the center of this gripper to be, for instance, or each of these jaws to be. Now, by looking at the graduation here, at, this, at the back of the robotic arm, we could tell that in two dimensions, say in the z direction and in the x direction, we could tell um, what, what the actual position of the gripper is. From our computation, we have what we expect the position to be. From our calculation, or from, the, our dia from our webcam, we can tell what position it actually is at. Now, um, by doing this, we could tell whether our computation is wrong, or more importantly, we could tell whether there is an error in the robotic arm. Now, if there's an error in this configuration, then um, what you have here, the position which you calculated from the forward kinematics, and the actual position in the webcam will not tally. And then we can, we can tell that there is an error in the robotic arms configuration that after checking your after cross checking your computation to make sure that your computation is correct then we know that there's an error in the robotic arm now to confirm that to confirm that one may decide to ro uh, move the robotic arm to a different location for instance say this location now not in each case i'm robotic i'm rotating the wrist so that we can see the graduation behind it you don't necessarily have to ro um, rotate it but whether you rotate the wrist or not the central position of the wrist remains um, constant. So we could just use this, uh, we could just compute the four kinematics for that central position by using this um, first three joint configurations that the, the, um, the configuration, the um, joint angle of the weight 
the shoulder and the elbow. We could use that to compute the um, position of the center point of the gripper. So you could use another point, then take the robotic arm to a different point to determine um, whether the error is the same at both, lo both locations. Now, going by that, we can tell whether it is zero error or whether there's another fundamental error of some sort. If it's just a zero error, then you could quote and unquote use biasing to solve that. Now, if the error is um, a configuration error, again, you can determine that. So this would be a good experiment. If you're an instructor wat watching this video, this would be a good experiment for you to give to your students. You could first do the computation yourself, determine if there's an error, and then you could um, tell the students also perform the experiment to see if they arrive at the same error. Now, if you notice here, you have remote, remote panel connection is closed and the robotic arm just dropped. The reason is this message here, your reservation has expired. That the reservation I made for this experiment has expired. That was a five minute reservation just expired. So I'll click on OK and it brings me back to this window where I can once again schedule another session. Um, so if you have any um, further questions about this laboratory, please feel free to email me at olawale.akinwale at oauefe.edu.ng that is o-l-a-w-a-l-e dot a-k-i-n-w-a-l-e at o-a-u-i-f-e dot e-d-u dot n-g thank you